Hello, it's Pastor Zemkin, back for another COVID update. Uh, it's Wednesday. We're going to have a PPC meeting tomorrow uh, where we're going to discuss a lot of um, reopening. So very quickly, um, I'll give you the agenda and the, a and the action items. Uh, most of you are wondering when. Um, the answer to that is phase three. Um, if you are familiar with Governor Inslee's plan. Uh, we are being obedient to the civil authorities, as Scripture tells us to, and so that's phase three. When is that? I don't know. Um, I've heard as late as 4th of July for a ballpark. Okay, so um, if it's two weeks, every two weeks, it would be Father's Day. If they do what the Secretary of State mentioned of maybe starting phase two on Jul June 3rd, then it's phase three is 4th of July weekend. I'm not happy with that. I haven't been happy the whole time, but that's because I love going to church and seeing everybody. Uh, and I suspect most people aren't happy. So most of you want to know when, and the answer is I don't know. Um, some of you want to know how uh, and what's it going to look like. So very briefly, um, because PPC has not agreed to all of these, but I've been collecting data from other churches as they've talked about what they're doing um, for the, the coronavirus and the, the um, restarting services. So we are in phase three. Why phase three? Well, because I can't have service with eight people. And it's eight people because there's me and there's Marta and or whoever's going to play the play the, the songs. Right. And so that's unreasonable and untenable for a variety of reasons to have me do 12 services with eight people. Think about it for a minute. Yeah, that's that's not going to work. So we're in digital format for a while yet. While that's happening, I'm not happy again, but that's the way it, it is. Um, when we reopen, we're going to reopen uh, tentatively with two services. And I've said 8 and 1030 just because that's how we've always done it. I'm not wedded to those numbers. Uh, in fact, 8 and 10 is probably just as good. Uh, 830 and 10 is probably fine. Um, we probably will want a little time to air out the building. Uh, to reduce the viral load uh, inside of that space. Uh, but if it's if we're talking 4th of July weekend, we might be doing that with windows and fans and doors anyway. So um, know that that is, that is a consideration. Um, so two services. Um, you will have to RSVP for those services. So two services a week, 50 people or 48 technically. Um, and if there's somebody in the congregation who would like to run the list, let me know. Because if you show up and you're not on the list, you're not getting in unless we have room. I suspect the eight will be lighter and we'll be able to have more visitors at the eight. Uh, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, both services will be identical. So um, don't think that you're going to miss out on one or the other. Okay, so the, they will be identical um, to the extent that I can preach the same ish message um, and the the that people will be able to sing the same ish hymns. Um, so that's how in terms of, so again, um, I'm not running the list. Somebody else needs to run the list. I got other things I have to do. Um, so if I have a volunteer of somebody who wants to coordinate who's coming when and to cap it, um, there's that. I will probably get to church and open the doors in so you can come in and not touch the doors because that is clearly a contact point while you're in the building feel free to wash your hands that is the gold standard hand sanitizer is not the gold standard hand washing for 20 seconds is hand sanitizer is only when you can't uh, and hand sanitizer doesn't help with soil so if there's something on your hands sanitizer isn't going to fix that so feel free to wash your hands frequently um in terms of communion, yes, we will be having communion. Um, how's that work? I don't know. We will probably be doing something called continuous communion where one pew gets up and stays six inches or six feet apart um, or six feet and six inches. There you go. Um, and comes up and gets communion and goes back. It'll probably be one person distributing the wafer and two people distributing wine on opposite sides, right? So you go to the side of yours. If you're groaning inwardly about continuous communion, pew by pew, remember it's only 50 people. This will be done pretty quick. Um, so there's that. In terms of sitting down, we do have to comply with social distancing. 
Um, and so we're going to be in a spot where um, if you're in a family, don't worry about it. You've been quarantined together all the time. And, and other than the cooties that your sister gives you, you don't have to worry about germs. Um, or, but um, that does mean there will be nobody behind you and nobody in front of you, right? And there will just be a six foot circle around you. And so people sitting in the same pew on opposite ends, that's fine. Uh, an entire packed pew because it's one family, fine. Uh, an entire pew packed because you love to sit together and you don't see each other except on Sunday mornings, not fine. So I don't want to be a jerk, but no, you're not sitting next to so-and-so, even though you've always sat next to so-and-so. Unless you live in the same house, that's the way it's got to be in the short term. Um, masks. Everybody wants to know about masks. Um, the government comes out and changes their mind from here, there, and everywhere. And we'll see if data actually bears out any efficaciousness of mask wearing. Um, the studies I've read are just across the board, just all the way across the board, from it makes it worse to it's God's gift to the world. Um, and especially most of you will be wearing homemade masks or, or you know, not the super fancy sort of ones. Um, if you do have one of those awesome CDC helmets that, that are from Contagion, let me know because uh, I need to borrow it forever. Just letting you know. Um, seriously, though, uh, right now how it's looking is um, you can come in, you can wear a mask. Uh, you can come in if you aren't wearing a mask right now. Um, this may change when we get to phase three rollout. And we may get specific instructions about this. Um, but if you are wearing, if you are not wearing a mask, if you are wearing a homemade cloth mask, know that it's not the end all be all. And I think we all know that. Uh, if you are not wearing a mask, please be respectful to others in terms of not getting too close to them, not breathing on them. Some of us are immunocompromised or have lung issues or heart issues or are in other risk groups. And some of the risk groups you can't see. Um, so you don't know that I have asthma, except I tell you, and maybe you can hear me wheeze or breathe heavily through my mouth over the speaker and, you know, but you just don't know about risk groups. Um, so, uh, yes, you can wear masks inside church and that's fine. Um, yes, at this point, I'm going to say you can be in church without wearing masks. Uh, but I will ask, um, uh, can you think about it for me? Um, I probably will put on a mask for communion uh, simply because that's how PPE works. If we're going to do something that's high risk, we put on our protective gear, right? Uh, so the surgeon doesn't have a mask on when he comes to say hi and make sure that you're the person he's going to take the leg off of or do whatever, right? But when he goes into the operating room to open you up and do the thing with the thing, he's gowned up, he's dipped himself in bleach, he's got a face, he's got all the stuff, right? Because he's going to do something risky. So church is one of those things that could be risky. And if it's not risky for you, it could be risky for somebody else. Okay, so at this point, I'm not saying you have to wear a mask. And I probably won't wear a mask during most of the service because I'm preaching and that's the thing I do. But you can bet that I'll probably will want a mask for communion because I'm going to be standing right next to you. And if you are one of the diehard mask wearers, um, great. I'm not disparaging you. I wear a mask when I go out and am around people because asthma. Um, but no, you're going to have to take the mask off for a second to get communion. Think about the mechanics. Take and eat. Take and drink. If you want to forgo communion, I understand. Uh, at least in the very short term. But think about the long-term effect of maybe we're with this for a year or two. Yeesh. That's not okay. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the last thing with how, uh, in terms of coming back together, is going to be a, a letter generated by PPC. Um, and this is kind of what it will sound like. Um, the spelling out the 48 people who can come per service. And also I'd ask on that, um, be willing to be bumped if you live close. If I get a visitor who has gone to our church digitally and comes for the first time, I'd love to welcome them in. Uh, and I will make announcements about that in digital church about call the church office and get your name on. But, um, 
I might ask if you are willing to be bumped for the sake of a visitor and think about the hospitality aspect of that and the gesture that shows. So just kind of put that away in your, your brain if you live close, especially if you live close to church or if you don't mind hanging out um, and waiting for the next service. Uh, so the first point will be the numbers restrictions again, and, and that's the government for us. Um, the mask thing that I've already talked about. Um, the next thing that will be on there is, should I come to church? And the answer to that, I can't answer you, uh, but I can give you some questions. Are you immune compromised? And that's for you to decide, but that's uh, something to, to, to really think about. Um, do you feel comfortable or is this just going to, I can't worship because I'm rocking back and forth because Jim Joe Bob won't wear a mask and he keeps coughing. Um, he could be fine. Those could be allergies, you know, or he could have the pneumonic plague and we could all die. Uh, you just don't know. Okay. So um, the biggest thing in the the letter from PPC will on the should I come, uh, there's the personal immunocompromised deal. But the other half is, do I have any symptoms? And these are not just COVID symptoms. And it's just not just for now. And I hate to say this. Um, but if you have a kid in elementary school, it's basically the same rules, public school. Um, and so here they are. Did you throw up in the last 24 hours? Don't come. Do you have a fever at all? Don't come. Do you just kind of feel... Eh, not quite right. Don't come. Do you have pink eye? Don't come. Let me say that again. Uh, do you have a cough that just won't go away and you know it's not allergies? Don't come, right? Or also not TMI, but have you been on the toilet for the last 12 hours? Most of us don't feel like coming, but don't come. I shouldn't have to say this to you because you're all responsible adults, but going to church, and especially after we've been away for so long, um, it's a big deal, and I get that, and I know that you want to come, and I know that you want to be faithful, but if you are at all, because the number one symptom for COVID is, I just don't feel quite right, but that's also the number one symptom for the stomach flu, for any of the influenzas, for any of the other non-corona-19 coronaviruses, which give you the common flu, the common cold, um, that's the first symptom of, I just don't feel great, lethargy, just, eh, you know, um, don't come, do us all a favor. And so that will be in the letter. And I can't be more honest about it than this, right? I don't want to get sick because you had to come and you don't want to know that you got me sick because you had to come. And Worst of all, you don't want to get so-and-so down the pew sick and then have them have a really bad time. So some of this is common sense, but some of this is Christian charity. And I'm telling you now, it's not me and it's not the government. It's your Christian duty not to needlessly imperil people. So, and yes, stomach flu and most especially, yes, pink eye are imperiling people. So that letter is going to go out. The particulars have to be agreed on by PPC. We'll kick it around here. But that, that's kind of generating. So if you're asking the how question instead of the when question, those are some details and some of a flavor of what it will be. Now, the final warning for me is just because I've said that this is how it's going to be is not a ironclad this is how it's going to be. First of all, we have PPC. Yay. Thank you, guys. Um, the, secondly, we have the government. Boo. Um, they change their mind daily. And so I can sit here and tell you how it's going to be if nothing changes. Um, but they may roll out and say, you can meet, but you can't sing. You can meet, but everybody has to wear a Tyvek suit. Uh, you can meet, but services can be no longer than 30 minutes. Cool. All right. So... This is subject to change, but those of you who are asking for a how, um, this is as much how information as I can give you right now, and I'm trying, but but that that's where we're at. So um, I'm going to end with a plea that you would pray for PPC. Um, they've never led a church through a pandemic like this, uh, and if you think about it, what PPC is actually trying to do is to plant a church while simultaneously growing a church. Um, so 
Uh, for those of you who are here for the startup of Prince of Peace, you kind of know how wild and crazy it was for the first year-ish while things were happening and lots happens. Um, that's kind of how life is if you're in PPC and especially if you're Len Crawford or Pastor Zemke or Lisa Ballard. And I'm not trying to denigrate the other members of PPC. Oh, especially Diane. Um, other than the social distancing, Diane probably needs a hug <laughs> because preschool has been rough, really, really rough. Um, so, uh, and I didn't volunteer Diane for a hug if you don't want one, but there it is. Um, so pray for this because PPC and your church has rolled out a new digital church. And I know some of you hate it. Um, too bad. It's what we got right now. Um, we've rolled out a digital church and now maybe four months later, we're being asked to roll out a new plant as we do two services and a church in a new different way that is some like the old way and some really not like the old way. And then at the same time, do something churches normally do uh, and feel very blessed by getting to the spot where you have to have two services. And churches love this. We love the idea that our sanctuary is too small and we have to go to two services because God's blessed us with people, uh, members, and isn't this great? But there's a lot of administrative tasks that come with that sort of setup. And we've never done this before, or at least this PPC with these people haven't done that before. So keep us in your prayers. Um, and I will then close with the Eighth Commandment that we should put everything in the kindest possible way. So if PPC is doing something, it is your duty to put that in the kindest possible way and to see us singly in person. And I will end also with Len Crawford's open invitation. It's my open invitation too, that if you can come to a PPC meeting uh, in person when we're allowed to meet in person again, please do. We would love to have visitors and we even have a time for visitors in the agenda. So we hope that that becomes jam packed and that you all want to talk to us and, and that it's a fruitful discussion. And until then, God's blessings on your week.